Hi everyone and welcome to a somewhat unusual version of the competition Crocodile, which as you can see we do not bring to you from our collaborative office space in Brussels because we are all working from home to stay safe during the coronavirus crisis and we do hope that you are safe uh, and healthy. Um, nevertheless, we receive a lot of questions these days from clients on how to respond to this COVID-19 crisis and some of these questions also refer to competition law. So we thought we'd keep the series running and address today a couple of items that seem of particular relevance. First, it's about uh, cooperation between competitors in times of crisis and how to respond to the crisis, including in trade associations. Secondly, we already see a lot of impact on ongoing or planned transactions and the merger control review of those. And last but not least, there is, of course, the state aid element. Um, governments spend a lot of money or have announced to do so in order to respond to the crisis. And uh, this is a particularly relevant aspect for all businesses in Europe these days. So we'll briefly talk you through those. And here we go. These days, many of our clients are reaching out to us with questions related to the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on antitrust enforcement. In fact, in th difficult times like these, some companies might feel a temptation to enter into so-called crisis cartels. But a crisis cartel is still a cartel and it's illegal and will remain illegal. Having said that, some forms of cooperation might be acceptable under current circumstances. I'm thinking in particular of those types of cooperation that aim at mitigating the effects of the current crisis and can be regarded as legitimate and pro-competitive. Think about arrangements under which companies agree to specialize in complementary activities to benefit from efficiencies. As long as these arrangements do not involve hardcore violations like price fixing, output limitation or market allocation, they can benefit from an exemption under EU antitrust rules. Or think about joint purchasing and joint production arrangements, which may allow to minimize supply disruptions in this way generate significant efficiencies. Companies may also consider other forms of cooperation that might include sharing of data and information for pro-competitive purposes. And we know that companies in the life science and technology sectors are already sharing data to benchmark activities and to find, uh, to find solutions to address the crisis. In all these cases, consider the following. First, these, ar these arrangements will need to be assessed in accordance with the European Commission's horizontal guidelines. This assessment will involve a balancing of the pro-competitive and the potentially anti-competitive effects. And the good news is that the current crisis may result in more arrangements being allowed than what would normally be the case, particularly if these are short and medium term. Second, the European Commission has already committed to providing more guidance and help to companies. So you should not hesitate to seek out that guidance. And third, don't send your antitrust compliance programs into current time. This is the time to use them. This is the time to have your teams take a refresher and be ready, not just for the current crisis, but also for the time after the crisis. The merger control review of transactions is also heavily affected these days. Some authorities have either suspended their work entirely or have sent the government officials home so that they cannot act with the same speed that we are used from normal times. Some authorities like the European Commission have actually even asked companies to delay notifications that are not strictly necessary these days. Um, others do only accept notifications in digital format and not on paper anymore. For companies that are considering a transaction or are in the middle of a transaction, it's therefore important to consider a couple of things in their planning. The main point is that the review of transactions can now take longer. Um, and you will see that either the authorities will extend the pre-notification period, or if you're already notified, may ask more questions just to win time and stop the clock, 
or may even push cases into a phase two for an in-depth review. And therefore, the parties should consider that in the transactional agreements, the long stop date is adapted accordingly or set accordingly so that you have enough time to run through the global merger control procedures. Uh, and also the efforts clause, which set out by which date companies have to notify a merger should be set realistically considering the current circumstances. And finally, you should prepare for more digital notifications. And that is actually something also regardless of the crisis that's very useful because it streamlines the process and is welcomed by many authorities. On the 12th March, the European Commission approved the first state aid measure in relation to the COVID-19 outbreak and has announced on the following day the flexible application of state aid rules to stabilize the economy. Already now, we can predict that the situation will be comparable to the financial crisis in 2007 and 2008, where the flexible application of the state aid rules was a political instrument of high importance. Additional national schemes will be also notified to the Commission in the next days, as governments in the Member States are working with full speed on responding to the crisis. On the 17th March, the European Commission published the temporary framework which enables the Member States to set up schemes, direct grants or tax advantages of up to 500,000 euros to a company, give subsidized state guarantees on bank loans, and finally also enable public and private loans with subsidized interest rates. The new temporary framework will also recognize the importance of the banking sector. Companies affected by the COVID-19 outbreak should take the following three steps concerning state aid. First, monitor whether your business falls into the scope of any aid scheme implemented by the EU member state. If it does, assess your eligibility and those of your subsidies and affiliates in other jurisdictions. Secondly, make sure to think of state aid law not only for direct financial grants, but also any other support measures attributable to an EU member state, since missing notification requirements may trigger an obligation to return the aid, including interest. Finally, work with your trade associations to discuss your industry's positioning vis-à-vis -vis governments, considering on the one hand aid schemes for the same industries in other member states, and on the other hand aid schemes for other industries in new member states to provide unfair competition.